right, Molly. You ready for me to go bye bye? Huh? You ready for? I'm gonna go bye bye for a few days. <laughs> yeah. We'll miss you too. Yeah. All right. Hey. It is 10:22 Thursday the 9th. 10:22 Thursday the 9th. I'm headed to Los Angeles for the Conscious Life Expo. And away we go. Enjoy your trip. I will. Thank you. Say hi to Gerald Lawrence for me. Say hi hi Gerald Lawrence. <laughs> I wish I were going. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. How you doing? Okay, today is Friday the 10th at 8.04 a.m. I'm at the Conscious Life Expo at the Hilton LAX Airport. I'm getting ready to head down for the first time. You will see what the crowds are like, and um, I'm going to meet my team for breakfast to plan out the event. Looking very forward to it. Let's go. Welcome to the vlog. <laughs> yeah. I was pleasantly surprised to meet this young lady. She showed me some very interesting art, and I was very moved by it. Can you first tell us your name? And yeah, it's my honor. So my name is Tuani, and I'm from Brazil, and I live here in Los Angeles for the last eight years. And since I'm a very young girl, I had a contact with beings of other dimensions mm -hmm. and uh, I could access other realms like past and future and simultaneously happening here in this present moment. I didn't understand nothing what was happening or my astral projections or dreams and visions and sounds and into uh, being materialized in this realm right here in front of me and I never really knew how to deal with and then I started to study and work with shamanic practices and work with different uh, religions to try to understand what was happening with me and then went within and understood that we are all artists and creators of our realities and if those energies and those images was happening to me, I trusted that everyone could see them. One time I was at home and praying for the skies and the wind came in and I had a time of, mm. wow, I can reflect their faces through a surface and take a picture of it. 
and using this tree of creation and power of manifestation to create this reality here, it is possible. I, I trust in myself, I can do it. And the power is limited in this universe, right? So I got aluminum foil that reflects the light very well, and or water, or a glass, depends on the moment what it is, and my iPhone, and I can feel and see the face on the surface, of the reflection, aluminum or water, and I take a picture with my iPhone. To wow. The iPhone. Yeah. And, and I mean, were these things you were you were seeing at first, and then you wanted to capture it on film, or did you discover them by taking pictures? So I know I saw them before, but they would come as humanoids, mm. more like uh, they would come in different ways, you know. Maybe it's not made me feel afraid. Um, uh, two years ago, yes, I was outside from my house. I was married for eight years, and I have a, a son. He's oh, going to be beautiful. eight, February 16. And uh, Valentin, my son, said, let's go take pictures, Mom, mm -hmm. outside. And I was like, oh, OK. I, I, I wasn't ready. I always kind of do like a little prayer and ceremony. He's like, no, let's just go. He got the <laughs> aluminum foil. He got the aluminum foil, hold it for me, and he said, take it. And I took one. He, he held it right in front of him? No, right in front, like, like this. Uh -huh. And I didn't see the, the being coming. I saw, it was so fast. The blue orb, the sacred geometry, he, like, was so fast, so fast. I didn't do anything, I didn't dance, or it was just there. Wow. And it came through the sun. So the sun was shining really, strong and the light came direct like from the sun this blue light and then I just like and the face was right there it was so strong and I took many pieces like, and, so it was like doo, 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 doo. and I have the whole process and I have many pictures of the process actually it's really beautiful and then the golden mouth yeah, we'll have the image up right now for everyone to see and to be honest in the moment when that happened, I did not know it was a blue avian. The moment when I saw. And then when I started to uh, meditate with the image and feel it, and it's like, what is this? What is that energy? And first I thought it was one of the spectres of Archangel Michael in some way. And then I was like, it's not, it's not 100%. Like, I feel the love, I feel the purity, I feel the peace. What is this? And then, right, Facebook, open my Facebook, Corey Good, Blue Avians. <laughs> what? <laughs> Click it in, the drawing, the drawing okay. and the explanation is like, oh my god, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. And, and, uh, Corey Good, the Blue Haven, the story, I felt that was right, and then I started to connect more with the Blue Haven energy, and then pray, and then open up portals, and every time by my side. I was in Colombia training with the, the, a tribe, by my side, and I could feel, and every time I would say, ra, 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 and I would just like dance, and say, ra, ra, and I, I feel after yeah, seeing you here. speaking. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, the, a lot of people think that there's only one person that is getting contact from the Blue Avians, but this is proof many people are getting contact from the Blue Avians. And not only that, many of us here are Blue Avian souls that have come here on a mission. And this might be one of them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I really appreciate you sharing the images and the process with us and sharing yourself. Yeah, it's my honor. I'm ready to, I'm ready mm -hmm. for the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we all are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are all are. It's time. Uh, Thank you. Blessings. Life Expo. What a show we've got lined up for you tonight. 
I want to thank really quick everybody here at the Conscious Life Expo, Q, Serena, Diana, Otto, Neil in the back, where's CG? Thank you everybody for all of your help. This is one of the great events all year in the country. Uh, there's probably 5,000 people here. And uh, it's, uh, it's just an honor and a privilege to hang out with all of you and broadcast live. Now, I'm gonna say this really quick. This is a live radio broadcast, okay? We're feeding out all around the world. We've got video cameras, we're doing a live video stream. So welcome to everybody that is, that is watching uh, Fade to Black here from the Conscious Life Expo and of course, uh, listening to uh, all of the feeds around the world. So welcome. We have got an amazing show tonight. We are broadcasting live here from the Conscious Life Expo, right here from the Plaza Ballroom at uh, the LAX Hilton. Our guest tonight, and as you can already see, will be, are you ready? David Wilcock, Corey Good, give it up. They're sitting right here to my left. Corey, you've uh, finally stepped out into the public for the first time uh, over this last year. Um, Rocky Road. It's not meant to be smooth or, you know, that it's just not worth it, right? But what has 2016 been like? And here we are at the very front of 2017. What kind of year has it been for the both of you, David? Well, this is a very critical year. We've seen uh, the WikiLeaks stuff take off, and we're looking at what appears to be some very rapid progress towards the disclosure that we all want. Some of these WikiLeaks emails have included statements from Edgar Mitchell saying that benevolent ETs are absolutely real, that they are uh, going to prevent any nuclear war from taking place, discussions between Edgar Mitchell and the lead singer of Blink-182, Tom DeLong, and Tom DeLong is now coming out saying that he's got 10 insiders that are giving him information to prepare us for some sort of actual announcement about the reality of what's going on. So 2016 for me was a year in which not only are we seeing steps towards disclosure, but in the course of this incredibly contentious presidential election that we saw, there was a lot of people who really didn't want to see Hillary win. And the reason why becomes clear when you start to look at these disclosures and you find out, oh my God, if, this, if any of this stuff is true, it's so bad. And we are potentially right now I'm sorry to feedback a little bit. I'm no, you're, you're fine. Um, we're starting to see the possibility. There's this FBI insider who's been leaking information very recently on 4chan, saying that potentially next week, we're actually going to see the first prosecutions of pedophiles in the Washington, D.C. arena. Next week is when that's supposed to start. So let's wow. keep our fingers crossed. If that's the first step, then the next step, as Corey and others have been leaking, is that once we go through this really dark stuff, we start to hear some of the good stuff, which apparently is going to begin with an announcement about ruins in Antarctica that are actually uh, artificial, built by humans, and not just it's not just an ice wasteland. It appears that Atlantis was Antarctica. Why do you think it is? I'm going to jump in really quick because we only have so much time uh, tonight. Um, and I'm going to defer this also to Corey. I would say that 50% of the phone calls that come in to Coast to Coast or to Fade to Black, um, I'm getting a little feedback too, Neil. Can you chill it? Okay. Um, Antarctica, right? I, I'll defer to the audience right now. Who wants to hear about Antarctica, right? This is on the front of everybody's mind. It's what they want to know. Uh, uh, Gory. Well, everyone's been programmed that way for a reason. The information they're going to release on Antarctica is going to be the first of this limited disclosure that they plan on doing. They're going to let us know that there was an ancient human Keep going. civilization, that it was uh, destroyed in a major cataclysm, and then they're going to eventually tell us that we have a space program, a secret space program. It's going to be one of the lower ones. And then they're going to say, by the way, that secret space program has found ruins like this on other planets in our solar system. And that's how they plan on slowly rolling it out. 
and doing a uh, doing disclosure over 50 to 100 years. A comic book that comes out two years after this breaks into the news called UFO Flying Saucers Issue Number 2 actually did a comic treatment of this. Here's the cover of the magazine and Gold Key Comics. They're the ones that used to do the Donald Duck. My father used to take me to the newsstand every Sunday. I'd buy these Gold Key Comics all the time. Our graphic novel's going to look way better than that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. This is a historical document, though, bro. you got to appreciate that. And sure enough, what we see here is UFOs on the moon. And then, sure enough, we have this guy here, and he says, My colleagues and I believe that they may be some kind of obelisk, completely different from anything else on the moon's surface. So that's a very interesting thing. There's all this stuff going on, including back in 1958. Now remember, the NASA frame of that face that I showed you, that didn't show up until 1976. This is 1958. What the heck is this? Come on. How do you possibly maintain a skeptical opinion in the face of evidence like this? A 1958 comic that is called The Face on Mars, in which the actual shape and structure of the face itself, other than the fact that it's tilted up straight instead of lying flat, it looks freaking identical almost to the actual face on Mars. And then the whole story is, I talk about this in Ascension Mysteries, my new book, it's all about this ancient race that warred and blew up their planet. They talk about the asteroid belt being the remnants of this exploded planet. So this was the first of the images that Corey came up with. This is a line art illustration of the original uh, concept art for his new graphic novel which is now this, and this is a big new thing. So, Corey, what do you want to say about the Sphere Being Alliance? <laughs> I was approached by Tier Air, and he stated that we're doing really good work, but when it comes down to it, we're preaching to the choir. We need to reach outside of the esoteric community, if you want to call it that, and begin to plant seeds of this information into other communities. You know, the sci-fi community, the graphic novel community, all of these people, they have a lot of crossover with this community. Their, their minds are primed for, for the seed to be, they're, they're, they have fertile minds ready for the seed to be planted. And from the beginning, Tier Air told me, it doesn't matter, or... Uh, when I would tell him, no one's going to believe me, and he would tell me it's of no consequence. And <laughs> I would shake my head. It's a little bit of a consequence to me. <laughs> but, you know, and, and the fact that we've gone, we've done all these episodes of Cosmic Disclosure to back up my information, and people are wondering why now I'm sharing it in a sci-fi sort of format. And it is to, to spread this information, especially the Blue Avian message, to the masses as much as possible. All so. right. This is a uh, rendition of the the craft that we arrived in. It arrived where? To to the Mars facility. Okay. So it it looked a little bit different than that, but that's the one where I described being taken with Gonzalez and one of the ICC bigwigs and we went to a Mars facility to do an inspection and the inspection was for them to prove to us that they weren't using slave labor but they wanted to take us to several bases that were known about and we had intel about a base that we weren't supposed to know about and we asked to go there and we verified that slave labor. And that's what we have here. So this is you sitting inside the ship, correct? And yes. looking at a map of Mars? Yes. It's like a big screen smart glass pad. And I remember you telling me that the, the ICC representative who's trying to come up clean with your uh, secret space program alliance folks who now seem to have the upper hand thanks to the Blue Avians, which we'll get into that in a minute, they said, hey, yeah, just go to any one of these bases on this map. And then what did Gonzalez end up saying? All of a sudden, uh, new points on the map started showing up, and he said, we want to go there. And uh, 
it turned out that one of the defectors from one of the secret space programs that joined the SSP Alliance was from there. Now, what I hadn't told about that situation in the past, if people remember, we were going to bring back a family with us to, for them to be interviewed. This family was this guy's family, this defector's family. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That I did not know. What, what are we seeing now? This is a, rend, a rendition of how I described, and we flew down into it looked like uh, almost an ancient river system, uh, curving sort of, uh, I guess, mountains. And then we flew right in to an opening in a mountain that is somewhat similar to this. And then that's when we landed our craft and were escorted into the facility where we began our tour. And don't forget that as we're live streaming this, all of this video feed is going directly into the live stream computer. So you're going to see versions of these slides on the live stream that you can order that are, are going to look a lot better than what we're seeing on the screen here. So just bear that in mind. This is the dart, what I sometimes accidentally call a dodge dart. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it fits two crew in the front, and then in the back there are three seats. Not a lot of room for cargo. It's just a transport. This was what was sent to Oops. my backyard to pick me up, to take me on to several different places, but uh, in, on this occasion to the Lunar Operation Command. We're going to talk about the, the, what the SSP Alliance is about, so let's do that really briefly. These guys are not, they're not wanting to keep this all secret from us, right? This meeting that you got brought to wasn't about keeping secrecy, it was about disclosure. Absolutely. Their man, the mandate of the SSP Alliance has been, it is time to disseminate all of these advanced technologies but disseminate it in a way to where all of humanity is exposed to it at the same time, not just a small group of privileged. This is, this, I mean, this is their mandate. This is, they, they want full disclosure. The SSP Alliance is probably the only group out there right now that's still rooting for full disclosure. About two years ago, I heard the blue avian message for the first time, and it hit me directly in the heart. Anybody else have a similar experience? Um, I think all of us are being brought together right now for various reasons, and the world is, is coming to a place where we're being brought up in a, in a higher vibration. And um, Corey here, you know, you're, you're at the front line of that, man, the front line of that. And uh, he was tasked to bring the message of the Blue Avians to a larger audience. And uh, it was probably about four months ago when he came to me with this idea for a comic book. How do you get this information to the people that um, are shut down, the people that are locked up? How many of you have family members that you would love to introduce this to, but have no, no way of doing that? When Corey said comic book at first, I kind of was like, what? And then I thought about it, and it makes sense, you know? Uh, Comic books have been used going back to World War II as far as a way of disseminating information. The, the images, the combination of simple text with images, it's very much like an infographic. It lands and it plants those seeds in the subconscious. Corey's been avid about trying to find a way that is an all ages you know, uh, platform for this message to go out. So as he talked with me more and more, this developed, and then lots of people started coming on board. We now have a, a, a very large team of uh, creative individuals, and um, what we're going to play for you tonight is the launch of the, the trailer here for Sphere Being Alliance, Return of the Guardians. Welcome, everyone. Enjoy the evening. What is their message? Their message for humanity is that we need to become more loving. We need to become forgiving of ourselves and forgiving of others. We need to focus on becoming more service to others. 
on a daily basis. And we need to focus on raising our vibration and our consciousness. Holy crap, right? I'll just say it now. I'm Jimmy Church. I'm here to introduce Corey, Fade to Black, Coast to Coast AM. Are you guys all believers? Are you? I'm so humbled uh, to introduce Corey. I've done this a lot over the last year, uh, introducing Corey and, and David, and you guys all know that. So yeah, here I am. No big deal. But you know what? Everybody wave at me right now. That's for Corey, all right? <laughs> all right, I'm going to keep this, uh, we're all here to hang out with Corey, so I'm going to keep this very brief. I, I do want to say this, uh, every time that I introduce Corey, or I bring him on the show, or we're doing interviews, I say the same thing, and I really mean this. I get emails, I get comments. Everybody knows about Corey, myself, and David's relationship, right? You guys all get that. You've all heard the interviews, right? Okay, all right, all right. Everybody says, why don't they talk more? Why aren't we getting information? Why don't they talk more, right? And I'm like, that's all they do, <laughs> right? That's all they do is they, they're writing, they're, the, the websites, the web presence, the YouTube, uh, Fade to Black. They would be on Fade to Black or Coast to Coast every week. I have to book other guests. I do. But I would do that. That's, they are right there. Corey, am I wrong in saying that? Can I shut you up? Say no. <laughs> That's what he wants to do. That's what he is here to do today. I am so excited. Um, please listen to everything that he has to say. It's not about to question things or to have judgment. It's to collect information and share that knowledge with your friends. We are at the brink of things. Can you guys feel this? No longer are we the strange group, man. It's the rest of the world that's tripping. Am I right? I'm gonna say this right now, and I mean this. I want to introduce my good friend to you, Mr. Corey Good. Corey, get it up here. Thank you. Is this a sign? <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate everyone that's live streaming at home uh, joining me as well. Let me position myself. First of all, I want to thank Roger and Renee for putting all this together for me. It's outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> My
most of you have heard my story, and I'm going to go over it again. So, <laughs> a lot of this you've already heard, but you, get, you have some eye candy to go with it this time. Well, we, we have all heard Mars is a dead planet, right? Well, it's not, it's not an uninhabited planet. This is a declassified film of Camp Century. It's a top uh, secret uh, Arctic base, and um, it was from Project Ice Worm. I'm showing this because not only have they been building bases in Antarctica like this since the 50s, but this is very similar to how they built bases on the moon and Mars. They would tunnel out the ground, clear out the ground area like this, and then use lo mostly local materials, fabricated materials, to, to um, build inside. And then they would, use, uh, they would use nuclear power in the beginning. Then they graduated to where they were using thorium generators. And then now they have uh, zero point energy, so they don't, they don't have to have the more dangerous technologies. Um, I'll let this play for a few minutes and, and chime in. This is, some of you may have seen this on the internet. It was released, uh, I don't know, like a year or two ago. Now, they would ship, I don't, everything was prefabricated. Everything had been put together on Earth designed to go together like a, a, a puzzle, uh, a puzzle by numbers. And I helped actually um, to, to build out an outpost on Mars. And we used a lot of the local materials on the surface after they had built below ground. And, 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 and it was very much like this. It was, it was much lower tech than you would expect. The inter Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. We've talked about how they use slave labor. They have been in continual trade with over 900 ET species. And believe it or not, non-terrestrials from other star systems are traveling here because they love the technology we build. This advanced, there are ETs coming to trade in their used cars for cars that we built. <laughs> if that's not bizarre, I mean, I mean, that's how far ahead our breakaway civilization is. Now, they don't have money in the cosmos. It's a barter system. And they barter and trade technology and biological material. And I'll kind of leave it at that. I don't want to get too dark, but uh, it involves the human slave trade it, with close to a million people a year. The inner Earth seems to be probably the most popular topic that I've talked about. A lot of you remember me talking about witnessing the city in the deep cavern. This is an animation that Rene created to uh, help depict it. It's very good. The only difference is the cavern was the size of a state. There's no way to really accurately depict on scale how large it was. It, unbelievable. There was mist up along the ceiling of the cave, cavern. It was, it was, it was I mean, like New York or Manhattan under the ground. Inside these pillars, natural pillars, there were, they had built in, into them. It looked like a bunch of condos. I guess that's where all the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the uh, they don't have money. I was going to say that's where all the rich people go. But <laughs> they don't have money. They're, they're a fourth density being. And apparently they, they trace their lineage back to the earth. And, it, it, and some of them, including the Anshar here, back like 18 million years.
Here's a new image of the Anshar Library. In the Antarctica, the beginning of partial disclosure, which we want to avoid. Recently, I was brought down to the Anshar city. I was teleported and found myself in an area I hadn't been. It was a, it was a hangar bay that was full of these very large egg-shaped craft. And waiting there for me was Gonzalez, Kari, and two of the um, very quiet Asian-looking groups that have the crystal under their skin, on their forehead. They all have a crystal implanted under their forehead. And um, they're very tall, they're very quiet, and they're, they have a very, very strong presence. They, they don't have to talk. And uh, I will continue with the, uh, the experience when after we got in the egg-shaped craft, they were obviously ready to go on in some sort of an expedition. They were wearing suits that looked like, sort of like chain mail. And when you, you put them on and they are activated, the chain mail just kind of, the, the threads get tighter and tighter. And it, uh, it, it, it looks like it's all one, one piece, the boots. It, the, the helmet looked kind of like what uh, people, what is, what is it called, uh, fencers, the fencing uh, helmet. It's not, not called a helmet, a mask. Yeah. In um, 19, the 1938-39 Antarctic expedition, the Nazis discovered Atlantis, and they kept it quiet. They found what we are now calling pre-Adamite ruins, and this is a group that I showed the picture of that looks like, you know, the, the pharaohs. They have the very strange um, uh, torsos. They have weird shaped uh, narrow ribs, real wide hips. It definitely don't look like they're from around here. <laughs> uh, they, the originals were 12 to 14 foot tall, extremely thin, very skinny, and when they found these bodies, they said it was obvious that they had not developed naturally on this planet. They had developed in a, on a planet with much different barometric pressure and gravity. Since these ruins have been discovered, we've all seen on the news all the different bigwigs in the cabal that have been going down and, and visiting Antarctica for many different reasons. And it's basically turned into a cabal Disneyland. They've been, what has been discovered is they've discovered three massive ships that were used to crash land on our planet. And they jokingly call them the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, because it brought this group here to Earth. We flew right through the wall and then popped out in, in a, cam a cavern, an ice cavern similar to where I had been taken before. Where we landed, it was probably a football field away. They were hard at work excavating using pressurized steam to, to dig through the snow and expose some of the uh, structures. There were all types of bodies that were laying out from these pre-Adamites and their genetic experiments. There was even one, um, it was a, a male about close to five foot tall, shorter, and uh, he was in the fetal position, and he had a tail. So this group, they, they were very big into genetic experiments, and it, from what we found there, it, it had gotten completely out of control. The, um, the bodies were not... You know it, you, how you picture the caveman just frozen and then you chip him out and reanimate him? They were in terrible shape. Their, their bodies were all contorted, arms wrapped around their bodies a few times like they had just been hit by something like, you know, a deluge of water, which froze instantly. <clears throat> After we had gone inside the library and uh, the two... Um, and I don't have a name for them right now, uh, two Asian-looking groups, they went in and immediately started removing, um, in, 
in the snowbank, there was obviously a corner of a building sticking out, and the suits we were wearing allowed us to walk right through the wall. And then we were inside this library this, that was full of all types of um, scrolls, bound books, and they walked right to one tray and started, and they opened up a folding um, like box and started loading it with these metal file, I mean metal uh, scrolls. And I saw one of the metal scrolls that had popped open and they had looked like laser etching on them. And they were, it, it looked, it, it, they, were, they were strange looking characters. And to this, I don't know why they removed them, but they obviously did not want these pre-Adamites getting access to this information. The pre-Adamites, when this deluge happened, everyone on the main continent, they were wiped out. All of the enclaves across the planet survived, and all they had with them was a technology that they had brought with them and the knowledge to engineer. So they, they were in survival mode. Um, we got a little bit of time. Does anyone want to do a Q&A? Yeah. Do we have another mic? Awesome. Corey. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Corey. No problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I came up with this question a year ago, but after today, I think I know your answer. But basically, are you optimistic about the eternal struggle between good and evil for the positive outcome? You, say, you can rephrase the question or just say yes or no. No, you're right. There, it's, we're seeing it all around us. The energetic changes, they're causing the evil people to become more evil, which ex they, ex they s expose themselves. They, they can't control their behavior. So they expose themselves, and as we're becoming, the, other, the good people are becoming more of a wake, we're, we're getting to the point where we're not going to take it anymore. And, you know, it's... It's, it's time that we get out and start demanding answers, demanding the full truth. When they come out with these partial disclosure narratives, we need to be in their face and saying, what about this, what about this? And, and make it impossible for them to uh, draw out over 50 or 100 years this, this partial disclosure narrative that they're planning on doing, which is they're gonna tell us, we found Atlantis, it's amazing, and that's gonna, blow everybody's minds as it is, you know, a, a good portion of the planet thinks that, it, that the planet's only 7,000 years old. So, you know, it's going, to, it's going to blow their paradigms immediately. Now, eventually, and then after that, they're going to reveal this um, Air Force uh, DIA, NSA program that um, they have uh, two... Um, um, barely more advanced than the ISS. They have two bases up that they made out of repurposed uh, uh, rocket stages as they were launching rockets into space, uh, the lower programs. And um, they're going to reveal this and they're going to say, oh, by the way, not only do we have this secret space program, but we've discovered these weird ruins on other planets. You know, that blows our minds again. What they've been doing in Antarctica is since, um, for the last almost, I think, 14, almost 15 years, they've had very prestigious professors, archaeologists coming down and helping them document it. They've been videoing it, documenting it, documenting the whole process, except they're going to give us a sanitized version to where it's only humans. They've, they're removing from this, the one site that they've been filming, they've removed all the pre adamite bodies and the hybrids and just left the ancient humans that were working with this uh, pre adamite group. And then later on, they're going to discover these ships and these pre adamite beings. And what they had, the cabal groups had planned on doing is then saying, oh yeah, we knew about this the whole time. We're related to them. We're their bloodline. And therefore you should worship us and make us you know, your, your leaders of, your, of the planet. And we're not going to let that happen. Yeah. I don't see how it's possible, but they, all of these groups have agreed that, that that is the narrative, that is what they're going to push. 
Corey. Um, I'd like to know what your knowledge is on the uh, medical field of the um, titanium that's and implants that are being put in people. For